Hello, my name is Leonie and welcome to It's the Autumn Season and I am looking for a book with a very specific niche vibe and if I don't find something to satisfy that super specific niche craving, I will combust. So that's what I'm here for. I asked you guys on my Instagram what hyper specific vibe you guys are looking for this fall and I'm gonna recommend you a book based on each request. Very excited because I love recommending books to you. The first request I got Studio Ghibli meets Dark Academia and I found this one first of all love, second of all difficult because Dark Academia is kind of like dark indoorsy but Ghibli is more like flowery outdoorsy nature but I think the book that fits both vibes very well is Divine Rivals. This is a romance fantasy. It has this mystical ungraspable magic that I'm used to from Ghibli movies but then it also has typewriters and literature and rivals to lovers and journalism. It has the academic rigor and rivalry of Dark Academia but then it has that heartwarming storyline that will make you cry that you're used to from Ghibli movies. An atmospheric gothic dark fairy tale but not horror. I love the specificity here. Wait the book's actually... Mm, I have a candle stacked on top of it. Am I gonna get it? The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. Roshni Chakshi's writing is extremely atmospheric. You will be transported into a world of illusions and mythology references and gold. It has the gothic manor setting. It's particularly dark about this very obsessive and toxic friendship between two girls. There's a lot of fairy folklore in this book and Roshni Chakshi in her writing just takes a lot from all kinds of myths and folklore stories. But it's not, it has nothing to do with horror, so Ugh, I love it when I can recommend one of my favorite books to a very specific request. Gilmore Girls, but they are secretly witches. And I got a lot of requests for like a book set in a small village with witchy vibes. Now I have one book. It's The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. Be warned, this one is only for the people that really really enjoy or are in the mood for the very quirky type of romances because nothing about this book is serious and if you take it seriously you will hate it. They're witches, they have a cute little shop in a small Gilmore Girls type town. One of their exes show up and there's a little bit of romance going on. It's very unserious. First I want to make a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor which is Skillshare. They are the largest online community with thousands of online classes and members who come together to take the next steps in their creative journey. Lately I've been really getting into digital drawing. Drawing has been a long time hobby of mine, but drawing digitally definitely requires new techniques and skills. So I've been loving following Skillshare classes to teach me how to do it. For example, I followed this amazing class by Brooke Glazer on the basics of digital drawing on the iPad. Following this class has taught me so many little tricks that I just never knew about, like working in split screen mode or that you can save your brush sizes, and so many more things that I never figured out trying to teach myself. And I'm so excited to use my new knowledge as I make new drawings. But Skillshare has classes on many other topics like illustration, graphic design, photography, but also freelancing and marketing and so much more. Do you also want to unlock your creativity and learn something new? Skillshare is offering you a free trial for one month if you use the link in my description. But only the first 1000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare. So click that link and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. A book that has unique and interesting characters that has dark academia vibes. And I got a lot of requests for like dark academia books that aren't recommended as much. And I have a book that is very popular but I rarely see the recommended as dark academia so I'm here to bring back the hype um, and it is Vicious by V Schwab one of my favorite books of all time. You're looking for interesting and unique characters. This one is very character focused. We have these two college friends that have a fallout and they become arch nemeses of each other and you're just trying to figure out why. Also they have superpowers. 
What does it do to a person when your superpower is that you can just bring people pain? What does it do to a person when you are invincible and nothing can hurt you? That's what it goes into. And also, it's dark academia, but not in like the literature classical sense, but in the biology experimental sense. So always a fan of that. Someone asked for Studio Ghibli vibes, little creatures, enchanted forests, and a moody main character. Very specific, but I got for you Among the Beasts and Briars. There's a pet fox, an enchanted forest with very creepy ancient creatures lurking in there. The main character is not super moody, but she's like a gardener that's trying to find her place in the kingdom. This book is fun if you had a crush on Nick Wilde from Zootopia, and I will not elaborate further. Gothic meets cottagecore, bonus points if there's a forest setting. I have the perfect book for you that also fits the prompt, a book that feels like the smell of rain. We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is a gothic classic about a young girl who lives in these ruins. She hates her family, but also really loves preserving vegetables and mason jars. So it's got that cottagecore element. I don't think there's a forest setting, but there's definitely nature themes. A book to get over Good Omens season two. Now, I don't believe that there is anything that can get you over Good Omens season two. Trust me, I've tried. But something that has helped me is not actually reading the Good Omens books, it's reading other stuff by Neil Gaiman. If you're in the whole of Good Omens, you're probably watching a lot of like Neil Gaiman content. And I've just loved reading his other books, specifically the audiobooks, because they are narrated by Neil Gaiman. He has a beautiful voice. I'm currently listening to the Graveyard book, which is I think is great for fall. But I also highly recommend Art Matters, which is a short non-fiction where he talks about the importance of art and writing and creative careers, which that one was very reassuring in a way that kind of healed a little bit of the wounds that he inflicted on me by writing Good Omen season two. A book to read with a good cup of tea. I got a lot of requests for this one and I have something. Oh, I'm gonna put you onto something. This is A Magic Steeped in Poison. It's a YA fantasy where the magic system surrounds tea making. There's a magical tournament going on around, you know, like making the perfect magical teas that the main character is going to participate in. There's a lot of themes around poison too. That's good. A book that's gonna make you blush and kick your feet in the air, but also has depth and provokes thought. You have perfectly described why I love the book that I'm going to recommend to you. It is actually Jane Eyre. Historical romance, like romance written in like the 19th century, it just hits different. Oh, when I picked this book up, I thought, oh, it's gonna be, you know, like thought provoking and deep and like really well written, which it is. But I did not expect to be kicking my little feet in the air like a little girl <laughs> while reading this. Like, yes, it's a very in-depth biography of this young woman and what it's like being a woman in the 19th century, the things that she struggles with, but it's also a beautiful romance between two people that just have a way with words that just immediately downgrades every single modern romance that you've ever seen in your life. There are so many romances, modern romances, that will have like a little line akin to of like, oh, I feel like there's a rope between us and it's pulling me towards you. Just know, I recently even saw this in the Red, White and Royal Blue movie, just know that that is all based on like a quote in Jane Eyre. And the original quote is like a million times more beautiful than any like modern iteration of it that I've ever seen, so. A high fantasy book that's not about saving the world or romance. You're gonna know which one I'm gonna say. It's Legends and Lattes. There are literally no stakes other than the question of like, oh, will this orc's coffee shop fail or succeed? There is a romance in it between like the coffee shop owner and her second bartender, but it's definitely not the main focus of the story. It's great if you just really love coffee and want something where just nothing happens 
and just get to know a few a few quirky little characters. A cozy romance that makes me feel something. And I got a book that also fits the request of books with witches as the main character. I'm always going to be recommended The Secret Society of Irregular Witches. On the one hand, yes, this is a cozy romance. It is a romance that's like sunshine, witchy girl, and then like a grumpy librarian. And it's cozy in the way that it's set in this like big house. It's just like this little found family. They're teaching each other magic. There's a library. But then boom, feels. Boom, you're crying. Boom, there's family trauma. There's exploring the theme of not feeling like you belong anywhere. And suddenly you're definitely feeling something when you thought you were just reading a cozy little romance. And then another one that I want to recommend for the cozy romance that makes me feel something. It is technically one that takes place in summer, but I, I just wanted to mention it because it does really fit the prompt and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. It takes place in this little small town. It's a very very fun like rivals to lovers but in classic Emily Henry style there is a lot of focus on these characters, their backstory. But yes it is quite sunny so I think it's better to read in September while well, there's still a little bit of sun. Like right now. I'm really trying to keep up the appearances but there's a heat wave going on where I live. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to film like cozy fall content and I'm sweating because there's a heat wave outside so if that's where you are right now you can still read book lovers. <laughs> a book to read in your uni's cafeteria to feel like the smartest person in the place. If your goal is to look intimidating and smart I think it's always a good bet to just go for reading some philosophy <laughs> but I would recommend you something to not like overwhelm yourself something that's genuinely really interesting and fun to read so I'll recommend a great introduction into philosophy that is The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus about how to accept life when you feel like there's no meaning in life and you're just doing the same thing over and over again to no avail. How do you accept that life has no meaning and you just feel like a speck of dust in a grand universe? Um, which I think is what a lot of people feel when they're in university. <laughs> Especially in September when semester is starting again. The Myths of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. For my next trick, I'm gonna be taking three requests and find one perfect book that encapsulates them all. A book that has a gothic vibe and a romance subplot. A book for an unhinged witch. A book about witches with the vibe and topics of sisterhood and girlhood. Have I got the book for you? It is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. A classic gothic story about a girl who grew up in a tower that has to, you know, learn to broaden her world. The main character is a witch and so are her two sisters and throughout the book they slowly and slowly get more and more unhinged. It deals not only with this relationship between these sisters but also everything that our main character has to deal with as like a young woman who is very much in the throes of her abusive family. It is very dark and gory. It is a horror book. So yes, it deals with themes of girlhood and sisterhood, but not in the like, oh cute, the sisterhood of the traveling pants kind of way, but more sisterhood and girlhood in the internal screaming kind of way. Sapphic vibes with witches. I have for you Bitterthorn. It is sapphic, not just in the vibes, it just, it just is sapphic. And there are witches. Okay, I will explain more. This is also a gothic story. It is very based on Germanic fairy tales and we follow our main character who gets chosen to like live with this like evil witch in the tower somewhere outside of the village that everyone is afraid of and then slowly a love blossoms between the two. Then I get a very poetic book about language and meaning, preferably dark and thought-provoking. I'm gonna put you on some more dark academia. Babel by R. F. Kuang. With this book specifically focusing on the academic topic of translation, it even has a magic system fully around that subject. R. F. Kuang is known to not shy away from very dark topics and I think this one is very thought-provoking. It really goes into not just the problems with the academic system, the racism that exists in academia, it goes into like strikes, workers rights, 
definitely thought-provoking. A book with a forbidden romance between vampires and humans. <laughs> I, I was just thinking like, oh, do I know a book with that? And I, the only one that I could come up with is Twilight. <laughs> but I won't recommend that to you. I just thought it was funny. I think it's very, very fun that people are suddenly wanting to read forbidden romance vampire books again, and that we have entered like a post-irony phase where we can all suddenly enjoy vampire stories again. I think that's wonderful. A book with Florence and the Machine vibes that isn't fantasy and has no witches. Okay, you've made it very difficult for me now because Florence and the Machine, it, she just screams fantasy and witches, but I actually, I do have a book for you and you're gonna have to let me explain a little bit. I'm going to recommend to you Bunny by Mona Watt, purely vibe based. Florence and the Machine sounds like angry women coming together for a movie night slash seance. Florence and the Machine sounds like obsessive girlhood. Florence and the Machine sounds like bizarre montages where you don't know what's real and what's not. I love Florence and the Machine. A book about a female murderer that gets away with it. Sometimes we just want to read that, don't we? And there actually is a book that is exactly that, um, and that is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. I will admit I don't remember how this ends, so I don't remember if she actually fully gets away with it in the end, but throughout the entire book, while she's like killing all her exes and then turning them into lovely little dishes like the little Hannibal that she is, she's getting away with it very, very often. And then, you know, the ending is still open for you. Like, I genuinely don't remember if she gets away with it in the end. A book that feels like Francesca by Hosier. First of all, I must thank you because I hadn't listened to the song yet, but when I saw the, the, this prompt, I was like, oh, let me listen to that song. And thank you. Thank you dearly. Because wow, what a beautiful song. Apparently the entire song, even the entire album, is based on Dante's Divine Comedy. So, you know, I could, I could recommend that you just read the Divine Comedy by Dante, but I won't do that to you. I also haven't read it. Instead, I have something else for you. I think you would like These Violent Delights by Micah Nemer ever. The song Francesca really gave me obsessive love vibes and that is definitely what this is. This is a love in the 1970s between two young boys that have their first queer experience with each other and the love that they have for each other is very codependent and obsessive and just spirals all the way to violence. A big theme in the song Francesca and like the characters that the song is based on, I read the genius page, is having love as an explanation for sin and explaining their sins away by just how great their love is. And that's kind of what happens in this book. I got a lot of requests for books to read during thunderstorms. Now I think almost any kind of dark fall book that I've recommended so far would be great during a thunderstorm, but the one that is the absolute best is without a doubt Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Not only are they on sea a lot, on the wild waves while thunder is posing danger to them, you know, I'm also thinking of like the electricity zapping through Frankenstein's hands as he shocks new life into the monster. I also highly recommend getting the illustrated edition. Look, okay, thunderstorm vibes. They're, they're in a storm on the sea. And these are beautiful illustrations. They are illustrated by Bernie Wrightson published by Gallery 13, if you're also looking for this edition. Someone is looking for gothic vibes, but not a classic. I have for you Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, not a classic, but I think it might as well be because it's so good. It is gothic in the architectural sense. There's a lot of mystery and intrigue about the unknown because the main character has no idea where he is. He just lives in this like huge building with like marble halls and statues, but he has no idea what's outside of that. Decay and the ruins and the setting play a big role, which is also a hallmark of a gothic story. And it poses some very interesting questions about knowledge. Um, so I think you would, if you're looking for gothic, mm, 
Mm. Mm. A book that explores mental illness in her 20s. Now there's a lot of books like this, but I recently read, I think, the blueprint of these kind of books and that is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. It's not gonna give you like the modern take on being a 20-something year old with mental illness but it is a great encapsulation of what it was like to be a woman in the 1950s and also what it was like to be mentally ill and treated with depression in the 1950s. It is quite heavy though, so don't read it when you're not feeling good. A book Rory Gilmore would like. Rory Gilmore is one of the main characters of Gilmore Girls and I know that Sylvia Plath is mentioned very often as like one of her favorite authors and that she loves The Bell Jar, but I already recommended that. I think that if Rory lived today, she would really like Trick Mirror by Gia Tonatino. Reflections on self-delusion. This is a collection of essays that touches on self-image, it touches on, you know, being a young person in this day and age and it touches on feminism. And I really feel like with what I know about Rory Grillmore, who is of course my personal friend, who I dearly know and definitely not a fictional character, <laughs> I think she would like this. Corpse Bride or Tim Burton vibes. Now, this one's very easy. I would recommend you read Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Did you know that the Coraline movie is not directed by Tim Burton. At first I didn't want to recommend this book because I was like, oh, it's kind of a cop-out to just do the book version of a Tim Burton movie. But it's, it's not a Tim Burton movie. Am I the only one who thought that? Please tell me I'm not. I think we can all agree that the Coraline movie has very strong Tim Burton vibes. It's kind of like creepy but still appropriate for children kind of vibes. And the book encapsulates those vibes as well. I will say the book is very similar to the movie to the point that I would highly recommend you first have to read the book before you watch the movie. Because if you watch the movie first, then the book is just gonna feel like the movie but without all the beautiful claymation visuals attached to it. Someone asked for creepy mushroom vibes. I know I recommend this every time, but the creepy mushroom book is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is another gothic fantasy, a feminist gothic fantasy with a creepy mansion where mushrooms start playing more and more of a role in the horror scenario of this like family drama horror. A book that feels like a pumpkin spice latte. Here's how I, how I interpreted that. If you want something that makes you feel like fall, but not somber, you know, like a pumpkin spice latte, it's still very sweet. It's like happy and cute. You want to feel like it's the somber fall season, but you don't want to feel somber then I think I would recommend to you Truly Devious. This is, you know, like a dark academia. There's a lot of murder. It takes place in a boarding school, but really it's a, it's, it's a pretty quirky, not too serious book. <laughs> a lot of people asked for books that were dark and spooky, but then also cozy. And I think Truly Devious is that because it's really quite unserious. It doesn't go too deep into anything, but it definitely has the aesthetic of being dark, of being somber, of being academic. Like the pumpkin spice latte. A book that feels like the dead poet's society. So I'm thinking academic setting, preferably like boarding school type academic setting, very elite academic setting, group of friends who all have this passion for one thing. And then I'm thinking of If We Were Villains by ML Rio. You know, Dead Poet Society, they're really into, well, poetry. If We Were Villains, they're really into acting and Shakespeare. Only difference is that If We Were Villains includes a murder. But honestly, I think that just makes it more fun. An autumnal cozy fantasy with a bit of a Ghibli vibe. For this one, I would recommend Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This book is about a girl who like grow up in a library. It has magical books. There is like demons and villains and dark magic, but everything remains fairly easy for the main characters. The stakes aren't too high. Kind of still giving it that like cozy Ghibli vibe. Um, and the love interest, this wizard, is very often compared by people who love this book to Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. So 
a Tomlo Ghibli movie. A book to read while drinking chai. Here's how I interpreted that. It is very cozy and warm, but you know, there's no caffeine. It's just like spicy, cinnamony, clovey. So I'm thinking something a little bit more mellow and very magical. So the book that I came up with is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is a fantasy book that is middle grade young adult. So, you know, although it has, you know, there's like demons and angry creatures, it never gets like too scary or high stakesy. It's an exploration quest about this girl that's going to explore this beautiful island, trying to make a map. And I think it has the very appropriate levels of magical that remind me of drinking like a chai latte. What is your preferred fall drink? Because mine is the chai latte, for sure. Like no doubt, nothing compares to it in my opinion. A heartwarming classic for autumn. <laughs> this question made me realize that the majority of the classics that I read are very far from heartwarming. Very, very far from heartwarming. One that I do have here in a beautiful bound edition is E.T. Hoffman's The Nutcracker. Maybe this airs a little bit more on the side of like wintry Christmas. But you can read it in fall, there are no rules. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe there's like a big battle and there's like war going on. But they're mice. They're little, they're cute little mice, okay? Heartwarming. Mostly because this reminds me of the Barbie movie. And that's heartwarming in my mind. <laughs> the best fantasy for fall and drinking pumpkin spice lattes. If you're gonna ask me for the best fantasy for fall, I'm gonna take this prompt to recommend the book that you're probably sick of me talking about. And it is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. There's magic. There's dark and handsome villains and towers that the main character falls in love with. There's a magical living forest. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I'm sorry, there's, there's no fantasy book that is more fall than this one. And also it's a standalone. A book that is short enough to finish on a rainy day. You guys know I like my short stories. I have two recommendations. If you want more on the creepy side of things, more horror-y, there are Thomas Ligotti's Songs of a Dead Dreamer. This is a short story collection of all of his like creepy existential horror stories that he's written. If you like the movie Annihilation, you would probably enjoy this man's vibe. And then if you want more on like the classic side of things, or you just want to read one of my personal favorite books. Um, it is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. <laughs> it, oh, this is technically also horror, but it was horror in like the 19th century. So the fact that this was like widely talked about it as being like extremely disturbing and like nothing a normal mind could take. Nowadays, it's like, oh, the, wall the wallpaper's moving. <laughs> It's really not that scary. Okay, next I had a request for gothic queer vampires. Again, people people want vampires again. What is up with that? Let me know. For this one, I don't have a recommendation of a book that I've read, but I still want to mention it because I do know about a book that I want to read that perfectly fits your prompt. So I had to put you onto it. And that is A Dowry of Blood, which is a gothic retelling of Dracula. So there's vampires. And from what I've heard, it's also queer because like all the old wives of Dracula are gonna like team up and work together. Everyone is always asking me about dark academia with rivals to lovers. And I never have an answer to it. Like I also feel robbed over the fact that we don't have enough like dark academia with rivals to lovers. But I want to mention here that in like a week or something, a new Ava Reed book comes out called A Study in Drowning that is going to be Dark Academia Rivals to Lovers. So look out for that one. Also a book that I haven't read yet, but that a friend of mine really loves called Killing November. This is also Dark Academia with this boarding school where people are basically taught to be like perfect assassins where everyone, every single classmate is basically each other's rivals, including the love interest making it rivals to lovers. I wanna read both of these books this fall, so I will let you know what I actually think of them when I read them. And then lastly, I got so many requests for people wanting a book that feels like Over the Garden Wall, which is one of my favorite shows. It's perfect for fall. 
And I'm so sad to say that I just couldn't think of a book that I had read that perfectly encapsulates the fall spooky but still also somehow appropriate for children vibes that Over the Garden Wall has. So if you do have a recommendation for all the people including me looking for a book with Over, Gar Over the Garden Wall vibes, please let us know in the comments because I want to know and I'm so sad that I can't recommend a book based on this prompt for you guys. If you want more bookish content from me this fall make sure you subscribe and I want to give a big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting this channel with a very special shout out to all of the Elite Hidden Library members and a warm welcome to our newest Elite members Alison Polsoni and Ritza Korea. This month we're reading Nettle and Bone for our Patreon book club. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon in another video very soon. Goodbye!